In this video, you will get a closer look at the Cadillac Series 70 7th generation. Its origin, an overview, price range, and a whole lot more. So stay tuned. The Cadillac Series 70 7th generation was made between 1959 and 1960. It had a completely new look, but the panels on the deck lid were the same. It took over as the brand's mainstay from the 1957 to 1958 Cadillac Series 70 6th Gen, and it was succeeded by the 1961 to 1965 Cadillac Series 70 8th Gen. Almost everything about these cars was done right, but they performed poorly in the market. You might want to stay with me for the next few minutes to find out more about this particular car that was sold commercially as Series 75 and its poor sales. Meanwhile, hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon because you definitely don't want to miss any of our upcoming videos. Both the 1959 and the 1960 Cadillac 77th Generation Series uses a 4-speed hydromatic automatic system. The 1959 Cadillac was completely different from the previous generations of the Cadillac 70 Series. It had a big tail fin, similar panels on the deck lid, a new grill pattern that looked like jewels, and two bullet-shaped taillights. The in-house trademark number for the vehicle was altered from 7500 to 6700, but the marketing name retained Series 75, in accordance with Cadillac's updated numbering structure. If you think the 1959 Cadillac Series is cool, wait till we delve into the same generation but more refined Cadillacs of 1960. The 1960 Cadillacs had a more refined look that was more of a toned down version of what had been done the year before. Both the 1959 and 1960 cars were powered by the revolutionary 346 cubic inch monoblock V8, which was less expensive and more powerful. The full width grille, the removal of tipped front bumper guards, improved restraint and the implementation of chrome trim, reduced tail fins with curved nacelles which encased stacking taillights and rear lamps, and front fender installed directional marker lamps were among the general changes made to the car. It is almost as if everything that made the 1959 series good was improved in the 1960 series. The elegant bodies of both the 1959 and 1960 series by Fleetwood ought to have made them an immediate classic, but the expensive cost hindered their appeal. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? If people bought more of this vintage back then, it wouldn't be so rare and expensive now. All Cadillacs used the same 346 and the L-head V8, but the old Cadillac 75 series produced 140 horsepower, which is around 104 kilowatts compared to the 135 horsepower, around 101 kilowatts produced by others in the range. This is due to a larger compression ratio of 6.7 to 1 which requires gasoline with higher octane rating. The Cadillac series was designed by Bill Mitchell and was assembled in the United States. The four-door sedan and the four-door limousine were assembled in Detroit, California, and New Jersey. A nine-passenger sedan and imperial limousines with supplementary jump seats were produced later in 1959. It was shortly after Chrysler debuted the imperial that the imperial moniker was phased out. There is no clarity on the number of units that were produced. This is probably because it got lost amidst the flurry of cars being released at the time, and because most of the focus was on its successor, the Cadillac 70 8th Generation Series. The Cadillac Series 70 7th Generation was quite expensive upon its release, and this led to low sales for what was supposed to be an instant classic. Its release price and current market price are unknown due to a lack of documentation. Well, you can't really blame the manufacturer for slapping that huge price tag on it. The car is packed, and it is worth every penny. That's all for today, guys. I'm sure you love this video, so hit that like button. Stay tuned for more classic car videos.